Hi, my name is Steve Chismore, and I'm the Bureau Director of PennDOT's Bureau of Innovations. It is my pleasure to host a series of podcasts celebrating the 10th anniversary of Pennsylvania's State Transportation Innovation Council, or STIC for short. The first installment of the STIC's 10th year anniversary podcast series focuses on the origins and early beginnings of the PA STIC, which was established in 2012 and held its first business meeting in March of that same year. Today, I'm speaking with Karen Vandervoort from the Federal Highway Administration Federal Lands Highway Office. Okay, Karen, I'll tell you what, for our listeners, can you please tell us a little bit about yourself and really what your involvement was in the early days in the formation of the STIC? Sure, uh, a little about myself. So I don't want to date myself, but it started way back 30 years ago. Um, I came onto the scene here in the Pennsylvania transportation industry, um, honestly, under the uh, direction and leadership of someone called Renee Siegel. So that name may come up in our discussion here later. So I was actually an intern for Renee back back in the 80s. Um, and that really kicked off my whole career. And I, I say that because I'm still here. I'm still here in central Pennsylvania. Um, uh, went to school here got married here, still live here. And I think that goes a lot to say uh, about the success of the Pennsylvania stick is that a lot of people were here for the long haul and we all knew each other. We all had um, relationships. So anyway, my career kind of bounced around. Um, I was the environmental program manager for many years um, in the Pennsylvania Federal Highway Division office. Then I changed jobs really Renee became my boss again and changed jobs to be her management analyst, kind of special assistant. And then um, in 2010, something happened. Um, a guy by the name of um, Governor Corbett, elect, uh, approached my husband, Barry Shok, and asked him to be secretary. And that same week, I found out I was pregnant with twins. So obviously Barry said yes, and um, the rest is history to his, his, uh, his, all his good work there at PennDOT. And I went on to an extended maternity leave. So when I came back, Renee said, hey, there's this thing that Federal Highway Headquarters wants to throw out. It's called um, this Everyday Counts program. Do you want to take that? I'm like, okay, um, sure. And we often kid, um, Renee and I, and and later on, she she became my boss again, and she just retired last year. But we kid that she put in my my duties, other duties as assigned. So this fell under other duties as assigned, this little program called Everyday Counts. So I took it on, and um, from there became another push from Federal Highway Headquarters to have a state transportation innovation council within each state in order to help push out the Everyday Counts program. So she's like, hey, do you want to take the, the formation of this thing called a stick? Sure, I'll do that. So that was really the beginnings of it. She handed me that assignment. Um, and the way Federal Highway had looked at it, they weren't overly prescriptive. They wanted each state to design their own stick as their stick, um, their state wanted to design it and include whomever they wanted to include. So myself and at the time, Chris Riley and Rich Heineman, we, we put our heads together and try to figure out a structure that would be um, sustainable. And here we are 10 years later, so maybe we did a good job. So, go yeah, I think obviously you guys did because, you know, exactly. Here we are 10 years later, which which is just fantastic. I mean, yeah, I, I remember the early days of the stick. I remember that very first meeting up in um, 8N1. Yes. And it was like, well, let, let's see how this goes. And it, it's just <laughs> amazing that it's still thriving. Right, right. So it's it's been great. And I... Um, you can't see me, but I have a huge smile of pride on my face right now to, As you to should. be here talking with you. So 
yeah, and, and I'll say I did it, we did it, um, we all did it, and we've done it for a number of years, so it's been great, it's been a great ride. Well, Karen, you know, given the Federal Highway Administration involvement, as well as, you know, of course, uh, PennDOT's, what was your original vision for the stick, you know, as, as defined here in Pennsylvania? Yeah, well, Federal Highway, as I said, they had this um, idea, and it was uh, Greg Nadeau's idea when he was um, deputy administrator under Victor Mendez. And I, I toss out those names because those gentlemen also moved up in the structure of Federal Highway and actually US DOT. And, and that kind of plays into the longevity of stick overall. Um, but it was Greg's idea to have this network uh, of cross the board um, collaboration with all partners. So in 2011, you have to put us back in that historical context. There was something else going on here in Pennsylvania, which uh, Secretary Shoke was very instrumental in achieving, and that was getting the industry together, which given our histories and our relationships and our, you know, our bond uh, as we've worked together for so many years, all of us across the industry, um, they really came together in order to advocate for um, increased funding, which eventually became Act 89. So all that was going on at the same time that Federal Highway was pushing their vision. Um, Secretary Shok had his mission as well, and it all you know, had commonality between um, being innovative for efficiency and effectiveness sake and collaboration. So the two really fit hand in glove nicely together. Um, it brought together um, many parties like Greg Nadeau wanted. Um, we created our stick to involve uh, other state agencies right of way, you know, beyond the turnpike, but um, DEP, DCNR, we involved uh, PSATs to represent the local um, governments and we brought in academia right away. We brought in Penn State, Carnegie Mellon and Pitt to give their perspective. We brought in, um, you know, PACA and, and the asphalt and the concrete industry because we all felt everyone had something of value to contribute. Um, we all wanted to hear their voice and their ideas that we could help push out um, the stick concept and and really strengthen this network of communication. Uh, so it sounds fantastic. I, I mean, it, it's it, it's kind of enlightening for me as well, because like I said, although I was at some of those early meetings, it's, it's great to hear some of the players that were on the field with us. Karen, what were some of the largest hurdles faced, you think, in, in creating the Pennsylvania stick? I think probably every state um, has this trouble too, and, and we do hear from many, uh, now from a federal highway perspective, headquarters perspective, we do hear many states um, have this challenge and it's funding. There's not necessarily, I, I don't, maybe there's one or two states, Utah maybe being one, that has carved out of their annual budget to fund something like this. There's no new money to do that. Um, so in the beginnings, Pennsylvania Stick had no no new money, um, but everyone had this new duty to do other duties as a sign, and so that that's always been a difficulty. Um, no no additional people to help, uh, and no new funding, and so it's there's that, and then you know maybe this attributes to the the framework that we set up in the beginning, but it's really tested the sustainability and that is the change in administration. Um, you know, the Corbett years were only four years in length and then Secretary Richards came in and and then now um, Yasmin's there. So we had three changes in administration at which any time um, the, the, the additional two could have just said, hey, we're done with this. We don't see any value in this. We're, we're shifting gears. We're putting our focus and priorities in, in, another, in another area. But that didn't happen. So we had, um, that, that was a challenge, but we, that was always in the back of my mind, but we were able to prove the value of our stick. 
Um, Karen, what advice, <clears throat> excuse me, what advice would you give another state or even a similar PA state agency mm -hmm. if they're trying to establish a, kind of a similar innovations council? Um, well, each state now has in some capacity, in some function and form, a stick. So um, what advice I would give them? Probably three things, and um, and I carry this into a lot of my day-to-day -day activities and, and what I'm currently doing for Federal Highway. And these three things would be, um, you need champions. You need champions to carry the water, to carry the message, to myth bust, um, as I like to say, to, when there's rumors that gone awry, just to, to right the ship and say what's what is correct. Um, so you need those champions at the highest of levels. So in PennDOT's case at the secretary level and you know, the CEO over at the Turnpike, um, they need to be, they need to have the same vision. Um, and then those champions need to be on down the chain. You need to have in PennDOT's case, the DEs bought in and then their upper management, and then you need to have champions even at the, you know, at the working level, people who uh, encourage others to want to share and collaborate. So champions definitely is needed. Um, and I think the, the structure of having peers learning best, best from peers, um, no one wants to sit through an hour long PowerPoint of technical information, but if someone can wrap that up in three minutes and you've worked with that person for 10 years in the field, you're probably going to believe them a little more and you'll be more willing to ask them questions, even those stupid questions. Um, so I think peer ver peer teaching peers is very important. And then thirdly is creating space. Um, <laughs> I was going to say in a virtual sense, much like we have today, um, but creating space where people can share and collaborate and feel comfortable. They're not, um, they're not overly challenged or reclusive. They're willing to share their stories and they're willing to share their successes and more so their failures because from there, then we can all learn. So I'd say those three things, champions, peers, and space, creating space. Sounds great. Can, th th this next question is going to make you actually put on the, uh, the the way back hat, so to speak. So uh, can you tell us what was your most memorable moment uh, during your involvement with the stick? I would say uh, three things really stuck out in my mind. It's um, we went to District 4 for what we call these innovation days. So, again, you got to put yourself back in the historical context. Um, the We weren't getting a lot of training across districts. So we went to them and these innovation days uh, brought technology and communication to the districts and district four, I know met us with a bunch of skepticism. And when they came into the room, we were pumping the music. We were playing, you know, highway to hell and, and life is a highway. And we were just um, off the charts excited and in comes the, no, I'll say like the maintenance crews. Um, but by the end of the day, we won them over and they were having fun. They were learning. Um, they were talking to each other, having fun with us. So likewise, in District 9, we played a game with them called Innovation Town. They just had a lot of fun. And then um, another one in Western, we we pulled together the districts of 10, 11 and 12 and had an innovation day. And um we always ask for feedback at the end and the thank yous and the um, congratulations and best training ever uh, kind of feedback that we've received is just um, very memorable. And we know we touched a lot of people in a good way and um, made them a little better off by knowing a little bit more than they knew before they came into the room um, on those innovation days. And it was always the goal, you know, always it, always um, just striving to get the information out and to win folks over. And, and you know, and clearly, I know I've said it before, but clearly you've done that. I mean, here we are 10 years later. Karen, kind of a second part question to what I just asked, but do any innovations particularly stand out to you in terms of benefits to Pennsylvanians? Yeah. And, um, I, yeah. And, yeah. Why is that? Um, I think one was the Tim um, traffic incident management um, money that we put towards that training and Todd Lease over at 
Turnpike has made that such a wonderful program. So just the element of safety um, is always good. So that training, I think, has won so many awards, and I, I believe it got some of its first seed money through the Pennsylvania Stick. The Salt and Snow Academy, um, which really showed the diversity of how the Stick leveraged their their resources and um, stick incentive funds, which is $100,000 that every stick can go after every year. So the Salt and Snow Academy uh, training was given to PSATs. And um, again, I think it it really helped them budget um, their snow m maintenance, um, salt and snow. So those three things really came to mind. Uh, thank you, Karen. You know, Karen, the, one of the one of the great things about the stick is it brought together a lot of various entities. You know, you brought together PennDOT, you brought together the Turnpike, uh, the transportation industry, a lot of non-traditional partners. Yeah, why is collaboration so incredibly important in helping to advance innovations? I think because um, because through collaboration, there's no surprises. No one likes to be surprised, um, especially on up the chain and um, the stick council gave people that space to find out things ahead of time there was um and that's up and down the the, the hierarchy within PennDOT or the turnpike and and across the industry so there were no surprises there were no um you know PennDOT coming out and saying hey we're going to place down we're going to use hot or warm mix asphalt on all of our projects mm, didn't quite work that way. We first got um, input from the industry and from the districts, and and that's what made that particular product um, kind of grab hold and and be used a little more. So it was that kind of concept is using um, the collaboration and relationships, uh, kind of going back to a lot of us have worked a lot of years together, and we have those relationships and with relationships comes trust. So I'd say collaboration leads to relationships, which then leads to trust. Oh, sounds great, Karen. Karen, you know, I, I mentioned earlier that we recently talked to the state of Maine. I mean, over the years, I know that just, you know, since since the stick has moved to the Bureau of Innovations, we've talked to Maryland, we've talked to Florida, I think North Carolina, I mean, just to name a few. I mean, the reality is, is the Pennsylvania stick has been held up numerous times as a model for success. Um, what do you think makes the PA stick stand out from the rest? I think the people, truly, uh, the people and the camaraderie that we have uh, together throughout the industry. I think maybe it started with the Act 89, the pooling together of everyone, like, hey, if we're going to do this, we need everyone on board um, to make this happen. And that was getting you know, additional funding for the deteriorating infrastructure. Beyond that, I mean, we have so many motivated and talented people here in Pennsylvania. So when you have all that in the mixing bowl, you're going to create something great. And I think that's what we have here in Pennsylvania. You know, you've kind of answered this next question already, but um, why do you think the PA stick has been so successful? I think the connections, uh, the connections of people across districts, it's not siloed in any particular districts um, and across agencies. As I said, we in the very beginning, uh, I think still holding true to today, we brought in other agencies. Um, and then we've given them a forum to share and acknowledge each other. Uh, that's one thing we also build in the early years of the formation of the stick is not only creating the space for people to share their successes and failures, their stories, but also to acknowledge each other. Um, you know, I often said, hey, we want to give. Uh, one of our purposes here is to give rising stars within the network of PennDOT and, and beyond a, a chance to shine. So you all know somebody or maybe you're you're that person yourself that if you have the motivation and the talent, this is really the place that where you can make your idea shine. You can articulate it and share it with others. There aren't many other mechanisms outside of your district borders or your agency borders where maybe that's um, can even ha can happen but here it can. So if you're motivated and you have a great idea, 
this is the perfect space for you to grow and become recognized amongst your peers. Karen, any thoughts on where do you think the stick will be in the next five to 10 years? Well, let's see, five to 10 years. So our newest authorization, the bill, um, you know, which was signed in November and just recently we got the appropriations, the funding for. So I'm hoping the stick concept, and especially here in Pennsylvania, is still in existence. You know, I think we have a, a a good foundation. We have good history, a good success record that it will still be here. It's just part of doing business. Um, and given all the emphasis in the new authorization, the new the bill, the bipartisan infrastructure um, legislation, that um, it, it really, if you ever read however many, the 2000 and some pages, there's a lot in there about innovation there's a lot in there about creativity, and there's a lot in there about working with partners, both traditional and non-traditional partners. And that's really everything that the stick represents. So I see it as being um, a mainstay. It's, it is it is here to stay. Well, that's great to hear. I, 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 I trust that you're right on that, and I, I, I firmly believe that. And... Um, yeah, it's been a fantastic program and continues to be a fantastic program. Karen, is anything that I'm missing? Anything that I should have asked you but didn't? No, no, I think we've handled, I mean, you asked all really great questions and given me the time to explain things and take you back a little bit into the history. And I really appreciate the the opportunity to to talk with you today. Oh, thank you, Karen. It, it has been truly a pleasure. Thank you for joining us today and for helping us celebrate the PA Stick's 10th anniversary and its efforts to develop and deploy innovations across Pennsylvania. Visit www.pendot.pa.gov slash stick to learn more about the PA Stick and how we are innovating transportation in Pennsylvania.